Graves disease. What is the other name of Graves disease? It's also known as diffuse toxic goiter. Now let me tell you one principle. All thyroid related disorders are more common in females. All thyroid related disorders are more common in female. That's why in this chapter we will not do male and female because it's understood that all thyroid related disorders are more common in females. So this Graves disease is an autoimmune disorder. It's an autoimmune disorder. It is associated with HLA, B8 and DR3. Since it is autoimmune disorder, there is autoantibody. So what's the name of autoantibody? It's the thyroid stimulating. There is thyroid stimulating autoantibody against which receptor? Against TSH receptor. There are certain characteristic features of Graves disease. Can you see what are the characteristic features of Graves disease? characteristic features there is thyrotoxicosis in these patients there is thyrotoxicosis there is ophthalmopathy ophthalmopathy what is ophthalmopathy collection of loose areolar tissue behind eyeball so there is protrusion and that's known as what exophthalmos that's exophthalmos after that, there is dermopathy. What is dermopathy? There is deposition of glycosa aminoglycans or shin of tibia and dorsum of foot. And what's the name of this condition? It's pre-tibial myxedema. But be careful. This pre-tibial myxedema is also seen in hypothyroidism. So it is actually pre-tibial myxedema there is pre-tibial myxedema after that there is acropathy acropathy what is acropathy there is subperiosteal newborn formation in metacarpals subperiosteal newborn formation in metacarpals so there is subperiosteal newborn formation newborn formation in metacarpals and there is gynecomasia there is gynecomasia so these are the characteristic features now what is the basic etiopathogenesis in graves disease have a look you can see that this is TSH receptor, right? And on this TSH receptor, which hormone is working? Obviously, the TSH. And because of that, there is secretion of what? T3 and T4. Simple. Now see, there is stimulating antibody. Thyroid stimulating antibody, which is going to stimulate the receptor. Because of that, there is increased secretion of T3, T4. And because of increased T3 and T4, there is feedback inhibition of TSH. So what will happen? There is decreased TSH. So what is the profile of this patient? This patient is having increased T3, increased T4 and decreased TSH. So can you see here, this thyroid gland is hyperactive. And because of this hyperactive thyroid gland, there is increased secretion of T3 and T4. And because of that, patients are having signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. One. Second, patients are also having signs and symptoms of sympathetic stimulation. Why? Because in hyperthyroidism, there is increased expression of beta receptors. And because of that, these patients are having signs and symptoms of sympathetic stimulation.
so have a look of clinical features clinical features first signs and symptoms of sympathetic stimulation sympathetic stimulation so because of sympathetic stimulation what happens these patients are having tachycardia there is palpitation there is excessive sweating excessive sweating and there is fine tremors you have to remember what there is fine tremors and these fine tremors are seen where in the fingers and in the tongue so these fine tremors are seen in fingers and tongue and this is the question which is asked frequently that what kind of tremors are seen it's the fine tremors this is the question which is asked and exactly where these are seen in fingers and tongue after that have a look of signs and symptoms of thyroid stimulation thyroid stimulation so we discussed already that in thyroid stimulation there is increased basal metabolic rate and because of this what will happen there is increased appetite but what will be the problem there is weight loss increased appetite but weight loss there is excessive sweating and there is heat intolerance there is excessive sweating and there is heat intolerance question is asked what is the most common gi symptom of hyperthyroidism so see the most common gi symptom is the diarrhea most common gi symptom is the diarrhea what happens in children who are having graves in children in children there is early growth and maturation early growth and maturation after that what happens in females females have amenorrhea increased risk of abortions and infertility so what about females females have amenorrhea increased risk of abortions and there is infertility there is infertility after that questions are asked what kind of symptoms are predominant in young patients and what kind of symptoms are predominant in elderly so see in young patients in young patients is the cns symptoms which are predominant and in elderly in elderly is the severe symptoms and what severe symptoms generally patients are having signs and symptoms of af and chf af means atrial fibrillation chf means congestive heart failure so this is the presentation now i told you that here thyroid gland is hyperactive and if it's hyperactive what happens there is increased radioactive iodine uptake because there is increased release of t3 t4 second the thyroid is hypervascular also and this hypervascularity is most prominent at upper pole and if it's hypervascular if you palpate it what there is palpable thrill if you put your stethoscope you can hear audible bruy and venous hum so two important points first in this case thyroid gland thyroid gland it's first hypervascular it's hypervascular and this hypervascularity is most prominent hypervascularity is most prominent at upper pole at upper pole 
And what are the manifestations here? Hypervascularity is most prominent at upper pole. And what are the mani what are the signs of hypervascularity? Here there is palpable thrill. On auscultation, there is audible bruy. Audible bruy. And there is audible venous hum. Audible venous hum so there is palpable thrill audible brui audible venous hum so these are the signs of hypervascularity which is most prominent at upper pole second i told you that the thyroid is hyperactive and since it's hyperactive that's why there is increased radioactive iodine uptake now coming to the diagnosis i told you that in majority of cases we can make the diagnosis by fnac there are three limitations. What are those? Follicular adenoma, follicular carcinoma, radial thyroiditis and thyroid lymphoma. After that, in two cases, we can make the diagnosis by autoantibodies. And what's that? Autoimmune disorders. So, Hashimoto's and Graves, both are autoimmune disorders. So, in these two, we don't require a fantasy for confirmation. We can make the diagnosis easily by presence of autoantibodies one principle second in any patient of hyperthyroidism presence of eye signs are diagnostic so here how we make the diagnosis diagnosis presence of eye signs presence of eye signs in patients of hyperthyroidism in patients of hyperthyroidism is diagnostic okay after that single investigation used to confirm the diagnosis is the autoantibodies so what's the single investigation used to confirm the diagnosis used to confirm the diagnosis and that's Autoantibodies. That is autoantibodies, thyroid stimulating autoantibodies. Diagnosis is done. After that, we have to start the treatment. See, two problems are here. First, there is sympathetic stimulation, signs and symptoms. For that, we will be giving non selective beta blockers, and that's propranolol. And for thyroid stimulation, signs and symptoms, we will be giving what? Anti-thyroid drugs. So, see the management. In the management for sympathetic stimulation, for sympathetic stimulation, what's the first drug given? And that's propranolol. So, the first drug given is propranolol non-selective beta blocker and second group of drugs given we give anti-thyroid drugs after anti-thyroid drugs there is improvement in symptoms within two weeks so very important point there is improvement in symptoms within two weeks and be careful the patient becomes euthyroid patient becomes euthyroid within six weeks so it becomes euthyroid within six weeks after that questions are asked what are the antithyroid drugs used so first is we use methimazole but there is one problem with methimazole what that it is associated with increased risk of there is increased risk of aplasia cutis aplasia cutis and quanal atresia quanal atresia it means it's not very safe drug in pregnant patients second is carbimazole carbimazole and the third drug is propyl propyl thiouracil 
what is the advantage of propyl thioracyl advantage that it's going to block peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 and that's why it is specifically used in thyrotoxic crisis because of this particular feature but what is the problem with this drug the problem that it is associated with increased risk of hepatic failure increased risk of hepatic failure in females and children in females and children that's why us fda issued a black box notice against this drug it's written in goodman gilman latest edition that us fda issued a black box notice against this drug it should not be used in females and children until and unless there is thumb life threatening situation and that is thyrotoxic crisis but see in bailey short subiston it is given that propyl thioracyl is the drug of choice antithyroid drug of choice in pregnancy but in goodman goodman gilman it is mentioned that it is carbimazole so there are three questions which are asked about antithyroid drug of choice see anti thyroid drug of choice first in pregnancy in pregnancy <coughs> is the carbimazole you have to mark carbimazole in graves disease in graves disease is the methimazole in graves disease is the methimazole and in thyrotoxic crisis in thyrotoxic crisis we go for propyl thiouracil so this is very very important it's as frequently in the exam it's very important as frequently in exam and there is one question which is asked that there is one side effect of anti thyroid drugs what's that a granulocytosis you have to remember there is a granulocytosis so with the help of this anti thyroid drugs what we did we made patient u thyroid and after that i will perform the surgery so what's the treatment of choice is the total thyroidectomy total thyroidectomy is the treatment of choice for graves for graves but certain patients are not fit for surgery in those patients or there is recurrence after surgery in those patients we go for radioactive iodine ablation so what radioactive iodine ablation first what are the indications indications first elderly patients elderly patients second patients with surgical comorbidity who are not fit for surgery surgical comorbidity and third there is recurrence after surgery there is recurrence after surgery after that questions are asked what are the contra indications of radioactive iodine ablation so see there is absolute contra indication and there is relative contra indication absolute contra indication first is pregnancy and second is lactation relative contra indication first children second smokers and third of thalmopathy of thalmopathy so we discussed that we don't want the exposure of gamma rays to the fetus that's why pregnancy and lactation are absolute contraindication in children also we don't want exposure of gamma rays in smokers and ophthalmopathy there is worsening of ophthalmopathy by radioactive iodine ablation so these are contraindications